Annyeong, it's Mikey here, and guys, so excited to come to you guys today, a uh, second time this week, with a special video, and I have to thank Meletrix for sending me out their new Zoom 75 Chica. Now, wow, this was an amazing unboxing experience. They sent me like a very, very special box with like all the different parts. Uh, just a disclaimer, mine is not the final product, right? I'm receiving the sample before they go into final production, which would be in November. And you know what? They said that it's gonna be a different box, right? So they said that you're not gonna get the same box as I did. It's gonna come in a carrying case and then the original Melectrix box they normally do, but wow, they gave me a huge surprise and I'm so thankful of this specific box that they use. Like, look at it, it's a drawer. So let's get straight into the unboxing and I'll give you guys more information of the board and things that you're gonna have to know for the group buy. So let's get straight into it and thank you guys so much. Please make sure to like, subscribe. So starting off with the unboxing of the new Electrix Tiga, Wichi Studio sent us the amber keycaps, the new one that's coming out. And my goodness, this thing looks so nice. It's a transparent keycap set and we'll see how it looks like on the keyboard. Now, I also got the Wichi Studio Pearl switches, which is what Electrix sent out with this keyboard to do the whole build. Now we're finally getting into the actual unboxing of the Electrix Tiga. I had to make it a little bit different angle because it was a big box and wow all the things that they put into this. You see all of those different plates so I will actually do a sound test with all of them. Let's actually take a look to see what the plates are. So FR4, Palm, PC and this is their brand new cork like plate foam and PCB foam. They also sent me extra foam for the keyboard. Now let's look inside this beautiful box from Electrix. So this came with a magnetic drawer style box. And wow, what an experience I had from Electrix. Thank you guys so much for sending me this out. This is truly amazing. It's one of the best unboxings I've ever done and it's beautiful. So that was the PCB and the USB dongle. It comes with also an aluminum plate and a PC plate. Also gives me one of those little adapters that I can put in to replace the screen if I want something else instead of an LCD screen. They even sent out a screwdriver. And this screwdriver is so I can use it to actually build this whole board, do any different changes I need to do. It's actually a really nice screwdriver. Um, I have an electric one though, so I'll be using that one, but it's really nice the fact that they sent this out to me. Now, we also get this cable. It's a nice cable that I remember getting from the ND, like the chill key keyboards, and all these different mounts that we get. I also get another set of foam, so ton of foam, and this will just allow me to do a lot of different build styles, so many customizations available, Let's take a look to see now the keyboard. I was really excited to see this one. Uh, I was given three different choices of colors. This was one of them. I'm not sure if I chose the right color, I'm going to be honest, but we'll take a look after the final build. And we have some of the plastic on the bottom, the static sheets, and look at this board. I was really excited to actually get to see it and try it out. So let's go right into the actual build and see what it sounds like. I don't know if you guys ever had the opportunity to try the Zoom 75 from Electrix, but this time around, it's a completely different style. So they actually have prongs now for the screen and the volume knob. And instead of using the original screw in for everything, it's actually just gonna be ball bearing mount and it's a magnetic mount with the PCB. Now that's actually really, really cool. It makes it so much easier to build with and it's, something that the market is actually starting to switch to, which is much of less screws and more of a simple, easy to build, easy to put together style. Now, what we're gonna do is put this together and get everything working, put all the keycaps and switches in and see how this goes. 
So first let's find which phone we're going to use. So I know that the cork is a brand new thing from Meletrix. We're not going to do it right away. Instead, we're going to stick with the original normal Poron foams just because I want to give you guys the sound test of the base and then give you a sound test comparing it with the actual new cork foam, plate foam, just to make sure that you can see the differences and see if you which one you want to get. So let's put the actual foam on the back of the PCB and then, sorry, <laughs> I also get this wrong at times, but let's put it all together. And then what plate we're gonna use first is the FR4 plate. So I'm gonna grab the FR4 plate and put it all together, give you a sound test. And I'm also gonna show you guys how I lubed certain parts. So as you can see here, I'm just making sure I'm getting the top PCB it's just the sheet and then the foam and then you had the back of the PCB foam as well. So we're putting it all together lined up and then we're going to need to get the stabilizers in. So these are the Wuchi Studio clip and stabilizers. So I want to show you guys how I loop stabilizers. I've done it before, but I'm going to show you guys again in this video. So you have an idea what you will need and how to do it. One note, Meletrix has told me that some people have been reporting uh, issues with the stabilizer, uh, specifically when changing to the 7U or it not fully clipping in properly because they're saying it's too big compared to the hole in the PCB. Uh, they, they're looking into it and before final production, they will fix it all and make sure everything is good. So let's go right into how I lube stabilizers to make them sound good. I use the BDZ, so we use this BDZ for the actual wires and then just regular Crytox for the housing and the stems of a stabilizer. So as you can see, I'm just looping up the sides and the inside of the housing just so where all the parts are going to be kind of touching together, it's going to be lubed. So just put the Crytox on the side of the stems. Don't shy away from putting enough right this is not like a switch we're needing to put a decent amount so that it actually goes smooth and it works and we don't get any rattling noises the key thing is we're trying to make sure our stabilizers have no rattling noise now the bdz is a thicker lube you do not want to put these on housings it will get sticky the Re reason i put it on the wires is it just covers it up and what i'm trying to do is just remove the tinging noise from the actual wires itself so this lube works really well for that. I actually need to get more, but yeah, this this works well. And I got mine from Mike Land. So if you are looking for it, you could grab some there. So we completely cover it up and then we're gonna put it together inside the whole housing and stem of the stabilizer. Uh, I know also what you studio was saying, or M Electrix was saying specifically that there was a little bit of an issue there with the 7U. So just be careful, I'm using the 6.25 that's what i prefer to use so as you can see yeah I, I do see what they mean when they're saying that it was hard to put in because the pcb hole is a little bit too small for stabilizers but if you use a like tweezer or something to actually just push it in a little bit it works well i didn't have any issues so just be careful when you're doing it but they are going to fix it for the final production you don't have to worry about it when you get it it was just during the testing of the samples. So now that all the stabilizers are in, I'm gonna have to put in which mounting style I'm gonna use. So the one that I decided on was the elastic mount. And that's just because I felt that it was a little bit more simple. It's like a sock based mount, but like I think it's pretty good. It's different than say some other ones normally do. So you'll see it very soon where it's a little bit of a different style and I think this works really well because I know I could have used like the split O-ring or like something else, but I think this is just a much more simpler one to use. And I think this is also interesting because it looks very different. It actually connects right into the PCB, like where your PCB has those points coming out and it goes right into there. And it has a little shape that's supposed to give a little bit of a bounce when it comes to typing. So it works really well. I was trying to figure out exactly how to do it, but you actually are supposed to just put it onto the PCB. So 
So as you can see, you just put it right on the PCB. Very simple, uh, but they do come off kind of easily when you are opening up your keyboard. So just be careful on that. So we're going to put them all in and I considered trying this one, but instead of putting the split O-ring, I actually went with the whole elastic. So now that everything's in, we're going to have to start looking at the switches, which is going to be the Wuji Studio Pearl switches. So what's special about these switches is that these are actually have ball bearings in the switch. So for stability, smoothness, it's actually really cool. This was a very, very interesting style that Wuji Studio did. I know that a different brand also had something before, but Wuji Studio also did it. So we're going to show you how I lube these switches. So you're going to use a switch opener, open the switch, and then we're going to take off the top housing and grab the stem. So what I'm going to use is a Crytox 205G0. This is how I like to lube my switches. I just make sure to have some of the lube on the top of the lid just because I don't want to put too much from grabbing it there. So we're just going to lube up the sides. So what you're going to do is grab the sides, lube it up just so enough that you can see it kind of right. Some people might consider my way of doing it over looping, but I'm going to loop up the sides. I'm going to loop up every single side of the switch. So this is how I like to loop the stem of a switch. Now, once that's done, what I'm going to do is put it back on the spring and I'm actually going to grab some lube and actually loop the bottom housing. So people might be interested in, you know, I know I had a lot of questions about people asking like, how do you lube? This is kind of what it looks like. So, the bottom housing, we grab the sides where the stem is going to be and the front. So pretty much wherever the stem is touching, I'm looping up, except for the back metal piece that actually brings the whole electric current of when the switch would be. Now, leftovers lube on the brush, I'm using on the spring itself. Now, some people might say, like, why am I doing that to the spring? Instead of just grabbing all the switches, opening them up, putting them into a like Ziploc bag and then using oil grease. I actually just like using the leftover lube and just putting it on the spring itself. I think that really works well and it feels very, very smooth. But this is how I usually am lubing my switches for all of my keyboards. And I know a lot of people ask and one day I will actually do more of an in depth with it. But I thought this would be the best way to show you guys as I have a huge backlog of different things that I need to do. So now that all the switches are lubed, we're going to have to put it into the keyboard. Let's do a little bit of editing magic. So we're going to add the amber keycaps before we go into a sound test. Sorry about the color editing in this one. It came out a little bit weird in the recording. So I'm going to actually now use the cork and then we're going to sound test with every single plate. So it's going to be the cork and then the PC, FR4, aluminum, every single plate using the exact same mount style.
Now that was really interesting to see. Sorry, I just dropped something right there. But this keyboard looks so beautiful. And look at that back design. Meletrix was telling me that they're going to have an open source file that's available for anyone that has access to their 3D printer. So you can actually do some modifications yourself on this beautiful keyboard. Like the fact is you have options for so much customizations for this board. Like in terms of color, in terms of just what kind of plate you're going to be using, the switches, everything. It's amazing. And it sounds really good too. I mean, the palm switches are a little bit more of a clacky side of a switch, but yeah, it sounds pretty good. Now the screen there is not working for me. That's just because mine came with a broken cable, but don't worry. In the final production, it's going to be working. Now, I do love that volume knob. It's a really, really good position. Like, it really works well for me because I'm, like, using the arrow keys and I can just access it right away. Now, this Pro Switch is, is a nice switch. I, it's not a thocky, thocky switch. It's not clacky. It's, like, a in-between, not too loud. I really do like it. It feels really smooth. But I do wish the sound was a little bit deeper. That's just me personally. I am more of a fan of something that sounds a little bit deeper. Now, these are all the different plates. The aluminum, FR4, the palm plate, and then what's in my keyboard right now is the PC plate. What is my favorite? I would say everything is going to be the aluminum plate. I really liked how the aluminum plate sounded compared to everything else. Like with the pearl switches, it really works well. But there's going to be a lot more switches coming out, so you guys have so many choices like you don't have to go with the ones that they're saying but it is a pretty cool thing now in terms of this whole build it's super easy to put together right like look at that look how easy it is and that cork foam in between for the plate and the pcb is actually quite interesting um i didn't feel like it was that big of a difference to be honest but it wasn't a very interesting thought process and the idea was really cool i think it does look weird when you have a transparent keycap set though. Like the transparent keycap set does not do a great job in terms of covering the whole, the foam and like the quirk foam so you actually can see it. Um, I think it'd be really interesting to see how this works like with a different type of keycap set, but this is the one that I was sent. So I do think this amber keycap set looks really, really, really nice like if someone's looking for a colored transparent set this would be a nice set to grab uh, there's also different colors i would just grab the amber but i even saw blue i actually think the blue would have looked really nice on this specific build and also be careful on the bottom corner where the right arrow is the arrow key sometimes comes out when you open and close the keyboard now Meletrix actually told me that there's gonna be a whole new switch set that's coming out from uchi studio so keep your eyes out on that group by it's coming out in a couple weeks um, and it's gonna be really interesting i think uh, i'll try to do a video with all of them because they are sending me the whole switch set like there's so many different ones so i'll try to do that now you're not able to see it from my camera but up close that whole keyboard case the top layer actually has some kind of sparkle to it it's like glitter on it and it's a really really interesting look like you have to really look closely at it but once you notice it it's really nice i think i should have got a different color actually looking at their whole color set now i think the red would have been really nice um it was my mistake of which color i chose right i had like a gum metal gray and this one as my choices as well like a strawberry pink um, because I, I thought like maybe i could build this for my sister but this color i'm not a big fan of it but it does look nice in total some people might like this teal color with the pink on the back for me i'm thinking i could have probably got something a little bit different but you guys have to notice that Meletrix is really putting in a lot of work to innovate for this board and I love how they are constantly trying to innovate. And for what price you're paying at like $200 USD, this is really not bad. Like you're getting so much for what you're spending. And Meletrix has been doing some amazing work where they even have a app development going on 
with the Wuchi Studio Pocket app, which will allow you to add stuff to the LCD screen, like different GIFs, and they're making sure the developers have doing a good job on it. Now, please note that the unboxing box that I got is only for me. So in the final production, it's gonna be a completely different box. You're gonna be given a actual keyboard case and then inside of a box. So this is a very different thing that I got. That's because I'm doing a whole review of all the different parts. But just know that this keyboard is so, so nice. Now, what do you guys think of this beautiful board from Electrix? I'm actually quite impressed. Like, wow, this is a cool board. And you know what? It was really, really easy to build. When I first built my first Miletrix Zoom 75, it was actually quite difficult. Uh, it actually took me a couple hours to do. This one was very, very simple. And I'm really impressed that they're trying something new every time. Like, they're trying to innovate each time they're doing a board. And that really, really impresses me quite a bit, especially in the fact is I really do like their boards. I think they make very, very good boards. And yeah, like, they sound, always sound great. It's always easy to, easy to work with. Now, this is the teal one with their new amber keycap set. So make sure to check the links down below if you guys are interested. And yeah, hope you guys will check it out. Check out the whole group buy and see if you're interested in one of their new boards. Uh, there's gonna be a Zoom pad, the newer one, Tiga Zoom pad, releasing next year, early next year on January, February. So that's something to keep an eye out to match with your Tiga when you get one.